And good afternoon, Brian Ross here for the next two hours of our coverage. Let's go straight back to the courtroom in Pensacola, Florida, as police detective Richard Gigliotti is questioning 42-year-old Ashley MacArthur on October 19th, the same day the body was found. What we're watching is what the jury is watching, which is a police interview with Elizabeth, uh, Ashley MacArthur uh, by Detective Richard Gigliotti of the Pensacola Police Department. This is the third interview that they conducted that are trying to figure out what happened to Taylor Wright. This interview took place on October 19th, the same day Wright's body was discovered on property owned by MacArthur's family. We're joined here to talk about all this with Elizabeth Crotty, a former prosecutor yourself in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, now in private practice. Yes. Let's talk about this. A lot of laughing going on. This is a murder case, but they're having a good time, or? Yeah, it is not your usual um, suspect interview. I think, you know, also, too, she obviously thinks that she's being brought in to kind of give help to the case or give some sort of supplementary te a testimony. She doesn't really, I don't think, considers herself a suspect at this point. Uh, it is not in the demeanor or in the way she's talking or even in the way the, actually, the police officers are acting. No. You know, that doesn't really matter how the police of officers act, but the fact that she seems relaxed, her legs are crossed, she's leaning in, these are not the usual stance of someone who's like, I am telling you my, my story. Right. She has her own version of events that don't include her being at this uh, farm property where the body was discovered. Right. The cell tire uh, ping showed that she was there. In this case, should she have been given her Miranda rights? Well, I mean, I think the Miranda rights is, was she under arrest and was she free to go? If she is the last person who is with Miss Wright when she is, you know, then obviously the police are going to want to talk to her. They did give her her Miranda rights at the beginning yeah. of the interview. And, and I mean, the police are going to want to talk to her. But if you give the Miranda rights, she's free to go. She's not under arrest. Um, she's giving a version of events. I don't think this is obviously someone who didn't think that her version of events was going to come back to bite her. Couldn't where be challenged. She, yeah, exactly. She yeah. Where she was, I don't think she thought she was remotely going to be a suspect at this point. All right, well, the judges said this will last about an hour. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll continue our live coverage of this trial in Pensacola, Florida. We're watching along with the jury the police interrogation of 42-year-old Ashley MacArthur as they confront her with the cell phone records from the tower that shows she was at a place where she denied being. Joined by Elizabeth Crotty here. This is the moment for her, right? I mean, this is the moment where I think she realizes, uh-oh, you know, all of a sudden my story doesn't make sense. And where she had been kind of giving very full answers, you finally started hearing, I don't know, I don't, know. I don't remember. <laughs> so yeah. it's kind of like, I think, and she kind of went along this long, you know, story of what happened. And then that you can see the officer going in and saying, well, do you know about cell phone towers? <laughs> and right. you can see right. the momentum start to shift and build right. in a different direction. And it is the case whenever you have a cell phone, it sends off a signal to a tower and that's right. recorded. Right. They can always place you somewhere as long as your phone is on. Yeah, exactly. And Privacy is not really as, as exactly. you think anymore. And in this case, they go to the telephone company, subpoena the records, and they start to fear, figure out that she did not tell the whole story of where she was. Exactly. And then I think they went over the timeline. She had she had done a job of telling the timeline, and then they started asking questions about the timeline. So I think in asking questions about the timeline, you can kind of see the holes in her story. I mean, if you have the cell phone records, it doesn't really t take a lot to figure out that she's not been forthcoming. Right. And the point here for the jury watching all this to, is to see how she lied and got caught in the lie. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, as we were discussing earlier, this is a very circumstantial case. There's no direct evidence of saying uh, someone saying, I saw her do this. So when you have a circumstantial case, all of the surrounding facts become much more important. So I think this kind of goes to, well, you, you went into the police, you told a story. It didn't ring true. What, what is your defense now? Well, the jury will continue to watch this, and so will we when we come back from a break. You're watching the Law and Crime Network. And there it was. The video now is edited in the courtroom. But there you saw Elizabeth Crotty. Clearly, what did you do to her? I didn't do anything to her. Right. I mean, the confrontation came, finally. They had taken all the information, let her lay, lay her whole story, the foundation of her whole story. They started with the cell phone tower. Then they started with the fictitious text, I need more time or I need time alone. And they were asking, well, why did you have her phone? And then you texted the phone because it was from the same cell tower. And then they even gave her the out of, is, was this you know, defense? Like, you've never been arrested before. You have no history of violence. Did something happen? 
they gave her the out and she said, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. So, I mean, I think it stands to reason why she is now on, on trial for murder and not say manslaughter. Right, in this case, and, and there the questions are going to haunt her because I don't know, I didn't do anything to her. What did you do to her? She's dead, isn't she? I mean, I, I mean, she was a crime scene tech as well, correct? So I, I was waiting for her to ask for a lawyer. <laughs> I mean, that's really where you know, they say, well, what happened and where was her phone and why did you have it? At that point, I think it's better to say, where's my lawyer, rather than try and answer the question. At this point, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I did notice at the end of it, too, she tried to, I think, um, protect her boyfriend, Kyle, right. and said, oh, he didn't know anything about it, um, because the detectives had said right. they had talked about it. But I think that that right. is really what you're... Right. Where, you're what and you're Kyle's her cousin. But anyway... Oh, sorry. The court will resume shortly, and we'll be back to it live in Pensacola after a break. Fascinating trial of 42-year-old Ashley MacArthur on trial for murder one. You're watching the Law and Crime Network. Stay with us. We'll be right back and we'll go live to Pensacola, Florida.